Omicron is very transmissible, transmissible variant, but much different than anything we've seen before. And but you can protect yourself and you should protect yourself, quite frankly. Today, the Biden administration laid out its new plan to fight COVID-19 on the heels of the CDC saying the Omicron variant is now the dominant variant in the country, making up 95% of circulating COVID cases. Good evening and thank you for joining us for Crempton News at 5. I'm Mark Hanrahan. It's good to have you here. I'm Whitney Ward. So late today, the Spokane Regional Health District is also now reporting a staggering number of new COVID cases. So we'll get to that here in just a moment. Nationally, though, the seven day average of new COVID cases is close to half a million every single day. Now health officials say they're just scrambling to curb the spread of this Omicron variant. Today, the CDC moved the timeline for boosters. They now recommend people get their booster five months after their initial dose instead of six months and President Biden announced the U.S. will purchase more than 20 million Pfizer antiviral COVID pills to treat the symptoms after people get the virus. So tonight we have team coverage on how this new surge in cases is impacting our area. Ian Smay spoke with local hospital officials about how they're gearing up now for any surge in hospitalizations. And Janelle Finch is at one of Spokane's only mass testing sites where the lines continue to be very long. We'll get to them in just a moment. First, though, let's get to our breaking news. Today, the Spokane Regional Health District reporting again a staggering number of new cases, the most we have seen in a single day in more than a year. So Spokane Regional Health District reporting 718 new cases. To be clear, this is not because of a backlog in cases either. Today's reported number is just one less than the highest daily number of cases that has been reported in the entire pandemic in Spokane County in a single day. The last time numbers were this high was more than a year ago in December of 2020. The Regional Health District also reporting 78 hospitalizations today. And to put that in perspective, yesterday there were 67. Also today, four new deaths reported in the county. Now across the border in North Idaho, the Panhandle Health District is reporting 163 new COVID cases today and 80 people currently hospitalized. Panhandle Health says it has received about 60 backlogged cases not previously recorded. So how is this surge in cases impacting our local hospitals? So Ian Smay asked Providence's chief medical officer today. He gave a stern warning about the impact Omicron could have here locally. Ian. Dr. Dan Getz said the impacts of the Omicron variant are compounding the already present staffing issues that hospitals are facing. If this new variant leads to a surge and hospitals continue to suffer staffing shortages, Getz said the state could be on the way to crisis standards of care. With early studies showing that the Omicron variant of the coronavirus could be two to three times more contagious than the original, Providence's chief medical officer, Dr. Dan Getz, painted a grim picture of what this could mean locally. When you look at how contagious Omicron is, Unfortunately, probably everybody's going to get a shot at uh, getting this thing, and that's why it's so important to get people vaccinated and really protect themselves as much as they can. Part of protecting yourself against the coronavirus is wearing a mask in public indoor spaces, such as grocery stores. But according to Getz, people are worn out when it comes to taking precautions against the pandemic. We know many people are experiencing pandemic fatigue. Mask wearing in the Spokane area has really gone down. Uh, stores can't enforce it, and this is not the time to walk around unmasked as we see this variant spreading quickly through our state. The impacts of Omicron have also reached those working in healthcare settings. Hospitals have been facing a staffing shortage for months. Getz says this is made worse by staff members being sick with COVID themselves or being exposed and having to show a negative test to return to work. If a heavy spike in hospitalizations caused by COVID coincides with a large amount of hospital staff being sick, Getz said it could lead to dire consequences. We're already at a point now where staffing is incredibly challenging. And if we see lots of ill calls and a high volume of patients, this really could drive the state into a crisis standards of care setting. According to Getz, those staffing issues are also impacting how much testing Providence can carry out. He also said providers are not only dealing with a high amount of COVID patients, they're also treating other illnesses or performing surgeries that may have been delayed during previous surges. Getz also said high capacities locally also might impact how many transfer patients they can take from more rural providers. Getz also said that the one characteristic that most people hospitalized with COVID-19 currently have in common is the fact that they are unvaccinated. In the newsroom, Ian Smay, Creme 2 News.
Ian, thank you very much. And the Washington State Board of Health is also now considering adding the COVID-19 vaccine to the list of vaccines that K through 12 students are required to have in order to attend school. The board is now asking for public comment on that issue. Those comments must be submitted by this coming Friday at noon to the email that is there at the bottom of your screen. We know the Mead School District sent a letter to parents urging them to comment on this and also to take a survey on their thoughts on a COVID vaccine for students. Those comments will be part of the board's meeting next Wednesday when they could take action. Right now there are 11 different vaccines that students are required to have if they attend public school, including measles, mumps, polio, and chickenpox. However, the state does allow for medical and religious exemptions. One of the biggest frustrations for people right now is just trying to find the tests in our area. Yesterday, we talked about challenges Omicron is creating for our local testing sites, and today we're asking questions about solutions. Krem 2's Janelle Finch is live at Spokane Falls Community College tonight to tell us how health officials are trying to get a handle on the sky high demand for testing. Janelle. Hi, Mark and Whitney. Cars were divided into two lines here at the Spokane Falls College uh, testing site. Discovery's regional manager told me this is just one of the ways that they're trying to make testing faster and more accessible, but the real need is for staffing. With only two local mass testing sites, Spokane residents looking to get tested for COVID are having to allocate up to an hour of wait time. Both testing sites have 500 tests for each day of operation. Discovery Health has plans to increase testing capacities by mid-month, but having enough staffing is delaying that goal. We've been working to try to keep up with volume. Um, it's definitely taking a toll. So also the double volume of the onset of the new variant has also been really hard for us to match staffing measures. Discovery's regional manager says its goal is to provide 1,400 tests each day, but there are necessary steps before getting there. Once we have staff onboarded and fully trained and ready to do the job at capacity, so there's definitely a little bit of delay and variance in that, but that is our goal. Providence Health also talked about staffing shortages, saying people are the most valuable asset when trying to provide more local testing access. Discovery's regional manager also says a way for the public to help move limes faster is by pre-registering for tests and submitting information online before visiting the site. Health officials are also encouraging those who are unable to uh, wait in these long lines to also consider other testing options like visiting a local health provider or one of the library systems that is offering curbside COVID testing kits. Uh, I spoke with regional uh, Spokane Regional Health who told me that they have allocated almost 6,000 tests to our local library systems to distribute out to the public. I called a few of those participating libraries and they said that if you're interested in getting one of those kits to just call ahead and ask about availability. Availability. In Spokane, Janelle Finch, Crime C News. Janelle, thank you very much. So what about testing in schools? We reached out to Spokane Public Schools today and they tell us they are still doing their own testing. A district spokesperson said they're doing the testing at Grant Elementary School. So if your child needs a test, contact the school nurse at their school and the nurse will then help the students through the process of signing up for a test. And while people struggle to find a test here in eastern Washington, it is a different story over on the west side. Today, more than 300,000 at-home COVID tests were shipped just to King County alone, with the first shipment to arrive next week. We did reach out to the State Department of Health today. I wanted to ask if there are any plans to try and increase testing availability here on the east side of the state. And officials told me they couldn't answer our questions today, but they said they are planning to hold a briefing sometime soon to discuss those testing options. So we're going to keep asking asking those questions and we'll bring you an update just as soon as we get some answers. We know this is a lot of information and it's changing quickly. So for the latest, you can just text the word COVID to 509-448-2000 and we'll send a link directly to your phone. In other news this evening, 11 children are now in the care of Child Protective Services. This after Spokane firefighters and Good Samaritans found the children after responding to a fire at that home in East Central. So tonight, Crem 2's Amanda Rowley talked with witnesses who reported that fire. She shares how they helped those kids until firefighters could arrive. You never know when you might be in the right place at the right time. As we shop at North Costco to be honest, yeah. and we don't go that direction. The Blackburn family found themselves right where they needed to be Sunday afternoon. They saw smoke from the freeway and went to check it out. We ran in, we were banging on the door and to get them out and we didn't know who was in there. A woman opened the door and to the Blackburn's surprise, several children came outside. At first it was one, then two, 
then three, then four, and so on, until it was 11 children had came out of the house. What was going through your mind? I mean, just to get them out, get them safe. The Blackburn family told me they carried as many children as they could from the house and loaded them into their truck, turning the heat on blast to keep them all warm until more help arrived. We put them right back in there. They fit seven kids in the truck. The remaining four warmed up in other nearby cars. They had a baby, they had three. Two babies. Just one sitting up there, three right here. A baby, a bigger girl was holding a baby. Two more over there. Spokane firefighters put the backyard fire out quickly. Then the Blackburns told the fire chief something felt off about the children. Some of them weren't like clothed correctly. According to the fire department's report, crews described the inside of the home as a hoarding situation. Garbage, old food, and animal feces littered the home. Some firefighters described the children as malnourished and dirty. We were all weeping. Oh yeah, immediately we broke crying. down when we saw the kids. The Blackburn family doesn't believe it's a coincidence they spotted this fire. They were right where they needed to be at the right time. The oldest child said to me, um, I got moves in mysterious ways and she said she believes that we saved their lives. Amanda Rowley, Krem 2 News. My goodness. Mm. Thank goodness for them, right? No wow. All 11 children, by the way, are now in protective custody. Spokane police say no arrests have been made at this time. We will share updates on this story as we receive them. All right, we certainly started off the week with a lot of heavy snowfall, and apparently we're not done yet. Winter weather moving into the area a little bit later this week, so we want to send things over now to Tom Sherry for a quick look at what is in store, Tom. Yeah, the snow just keeps piling up. We're going to get another inch of snow tonight, but the real strong storm system looks like it's moving in Wednesday night into Thursday, and that's where a winter storm watch is in place for much of Washington, Idaho, and western Montana. Then a winter storm warning in effect where you see shaded in pink along the Cascades and down into the Yakima Basin. So look for that. We could get four to six inches of snow uh, between uh, Thursday or Wednesday evening into Thursday morning in the Spokane and surrounding areas. So this is really going to pile up. Uh, look at what Snoqualmie Pass looks like right now. It's moving, but there is snow and ice on the roadway. It is not pleasant traveling and the roads are icing up here locally as well. 29 degrees is the current temperature late tonight. Hopefully when you're off the roads and in bed tonight, you'll get the snow start here in the Spokane area. It'll start around midnight, continue about 5 a.m. at least here locally. There is some snow down in the lower Columbia Basin, even a snow rain mix as we've got temperatures. Some areas are in the teens and other areas are above freezing. Your three day forecast calling for an overnight low of 19 tonight and then a high tomorrow of 26. Again, late tomorrow night into Thursday. Snow that may change to rain in the afternoon and sloppy on Friday. Rain snow mix with a daytime high of 40. What is that really mean shovel it as soon as you can while it's lighter because once we get rain on top of it or the temperatures warm up it is going to be very very heavy don't procrastinate good advice tom thank you very much all right still ahead tonight a doctor has been fined tens of thousands of dollars after an undercover investigation why even after a second inspection she still refuses to follow COVID guidelines we're back after a quick break